Good morning, it's Clay at ClayTrader.com. This will be a live trade video where I try to capture some of my trades as they play out live. Real quick, what do I mean by live? Well, what I mean is that this is not a situation where I've already recorded everything and now I'm coming back and explaining what's already happened. So this is not a post commentary. This is not a trade recap. I'm recording myself seeing the data, seeing the information for the very first time. So if you want an unscripted look into what it's like to be a day trader, how day trading can play out, then you're gonna get that with this video. So I will go ahead and pause for now. Market opens up in about two minutes and I'll be back at the open. I am gonna be watching MR NA out of the opening gates. So if you're not familiar with my screen, then right up here you can see the ticker symbol right there. And the two levels I'm very curious about, 375 and 372. I have them marked out on the chart. Um, so we'll see if they come into play or not. Again, these are live, so I have no idea. Who knows, maybe I won't even trade MRNA. I don't know at this point, uh, but that's the game plan as of, as of right now. All right, the market's just open. That is the one minute candle, meaning this is what's showing me what's going on in the opening minute of the day. I'm not gonna touch, uh, touch this one during the opening minute, and that may cause me to get left behind. Look at this, isn't that crazy? Look at that, the both levels I mapped out, the prices bounce off of both those. I'm telling you, the power of charts, pretty crazy stuff. I'm excited I caught that on video. All right, I, oh. It's breaking down and leaving me behind. That is unfortunate, but yeah, I just can't take that trade right now. My mind, a bit too risky. Uh, if you do hear typing, that's just me making alerts in the private community that I offer. But yeah, as of right now, so 372 is back in play, but I'd like to see it come up a little bit. Come up, maybe get up to 374, then come back down to 372. But it's not really cooperating. All right, well, kind of unfortunate right now. Although this 371 mark is definitely taking shape as an interesting level, especially when I factor in the pre-market. So maybe 371 could be interesting here, but again, I'm not willing to take anything with it right now. So I will go ahead and pause. Well, let's see what happens with 371 here. Is it gonna hold again? And if it wants to go sideways a little bit and then come back down through 371, I would be interested. But as of now, I'm not willing to take that trade, in my mind, a bit too risky. So I, I'm gonna go ahead and pause for now. And that is exactly why now look at this thing bouncing to the upside. So yes, very glad I did not suffer from FOMO or anything like that because had I done that, wow. That would not have been a good situation. Look at this thing spike to the upside now. All right, I'm gonna go ahead and pause. Quick update, this thing just keeps going now, had I gotten in there, there would have been a stop loss, so it's not like my account would be gone, but it does also illustrate uh, the dangers. Right, just 379, so that's 50, so I don't know if I go with, uh, I'm just trying to think, 382, 379, it's three, 300. Yeah, I can live with 300. So thinking about maybe trying to get short here at, I like that, 380, 382, so that's $200. Again, just trying to think things out here. Wow, it just keeps on spiking. So never mind on that because now my risk would just be too far. Um, yeah, what a spike. That's really all I can say right now. All right, well, I'm gonna go ahead and pause and see if I can find something else. All right, I'm liking 382 as a potential break here. Just 100 shares because not quite sure if it wants to go or not, but if it does, then I think it's got a chance to move very nicely, but there's no doubt about it. Definitely a, a, a big area of resistance there. But yeah, let's see if the price can push up through there. There we go. So got a good start to it. So took off some there at just 25 shares. Let's see if we can get more of a move though.
trying to give this thing some time here to try to break out, but I don't like how it's hesitating so much. And that fast just turned around. So this very well could still be a losing trade. If this goes down below 380, I'm gonna have to hop out. As it did there, at least I thought it did. I'm sorry, it wasn't 380. I was looking at the wrong number. That was 381, so I did still play that right. Well, bummer. $72 loss. And um, disappointing, but $72, I feel okay about that. But um, And it, it still may come back up, and if it is, it is, then okay, that's just the way trading goes. But I was looking for the breakout, I got the breakout, it started to go in my favor. So, I mean, I did take off just a, a portion, which helped out, which mitigated the risk. But I mean, I, I was looking for a bigger move than that. So yes, in hindsight, well, Clay, why don't you just, why don't you just sell everything? Why don't you just sell everything up there? That would have been a, you know, you know, a nice, quick, you know, over a hundred dollar move. And, and you're right, yeah, in hindsight, I, I should have just taken off everything right there. But what happens if it had continued to blast upwards? Then I'd be sitting here saying, you'd be sitting here saying, well, Clay, why did you sell so soon? So that's just the challenging game, that's just the challenging world of trading um, is you just, sometimes things like that happen. Broke out, gave it time, gave it time, came back down, I had to just accept it. Um, and if it recovers back up, well then so be it. But uh, you know, I was looking forward to break out on that move and as it came back down, uh, you know, that was, uh, in, in my mind, that was, the, that was the move I was looking for. The move was no longer happening. So just said, uh, you know, cut the loss and live to fight another day. But again, down $72 uh, and, and I get it, money doesn't grow on trees. However, uh, that's something that I feel relatively confident about that I'll, I'll, I'll be able to get back over the course of the next few trades, whether that's today or the next day. Uh, but point being, uh, $72, not exactly a massive hole. And for full transparency's sake, even though it makes me look stupid, check that out, there it goes. So that's the problem with trading. I was right, but I still lost money. How could I be right, but still lose money? Because my, <clears throat> my timing was off. Remember at that point, things were looking pretty sketchy. <clears throat> Excuse me, um, but yeah, my timing was off. And uh, so if you've ever been here, rest assured, you're not alone. Look at this thing go. You're not alone, it just happened to me, uh, but sometimes you just gotta acknowledge the fact, I, and I understand in hindsight, Clay, you, you, you should have held strong. Yeah, yeah, I, you're right, I should have in hindsight, but what happens if this thing would have kept on rolling back over? You'd be saying, Clay, why were you holding strong? Why didn't you just cut the loss? So again, hindsight trading, uh, is a very challenging game and it's very easy to trade in hindsight, but as you're seeing here, and I think why these videos are popular is because it's truly live. Nobody knows what happens next, ex in including myself. And yeah, sometimes you're, you're just gonna you know, look stupid, feel stupid, and uh, <laughs> it is what it is. All right, looking for a potential short here at 681. I don't know, it's very choppy, so I gotta be careful that I'm not just forcing a trade just to try to make this $72 back because that's where things can get a little silly, a little ridiculous, um, especially when I have the YouTube voice going on saying, come on, Clay, we gotta get that $72 back. That, that'll make it a better YouTube video. You, do you really wanna post a losing trade on YouTube? And even though I've been up, done it many, many times before, uh, you know, I also self uh, admit that, yeah, there's when you are making videos on YouTube, there is a YouTube voice that makes you wanna make cool videos. And if the problem with that is, Sometimes I can make you do really stupid things, and I, I don't wanna do that with this one by just forcing a trade in the name of, let's make a cool YouTube video here. Um, so, and then none of that is excuses because nobody's forcing me to do this. This is my own choice to do this. All I'm communicating is, you know, it, it's, it's just, you know, uh, the YouTube voice, for me at least, is a very real thing, so gotta be careful with that. And, uh, you know, could just kinda talking out loud with you, but all right, mRNA. Oops, let's see if I can get that typed in the right way. Coming down here, back down to 375. But at this point, I feel like that's just too much of a, of a chase right now. I'm gonna keep my eye on it. All right, I will go ahead and pause. And yeah, so here we have a, a great example of what I was talking about. Um, and so let's just say that you know, I, I'd, I'd bought in that breakout right there for whatever reason, uh, which would have been a good breakout, started to go in my favor, but then it started to come back down. What happens if I would have played the, you know what, well, I'm just gonna hold. Look what would have happened in this situation. Destroyed. 
So I'm well aware it didn't happen here, right? It came down. If I play that, well, I should have held game, then yes, I would have made money. But let's play that game again. Let's play the should have held game right there. Uh, or excuse me, let's say it came down you know, right there. Oh, you, you should have held. Getting absolutely destroyed. Um, and wow, talk about a good real life learning example that I had no idea was coming about. Uh, but here we are. So talk about a contrast. And that's why I had to just cut the loss where I did because at the time, I didn't know if something like this was gonna happen. And if it did, well then that $72 loss would be so, so much bigger. Um, so sure, it did cost me some money, but it helped me avoid a potential one of these. Again, I understand, Well, but that didn't happen, Clay, it went back up, I know. But what I'm trying to convey here is this could have happened right here. Because I guarantee you there was somebody somewhere in the world that bought the breakout, saw it pulled back and like, no, I'm gonna hold. I'm, I'm not, I'm not gonna get choking out, I'm, I'm gonna stay strong, and they are getting demolished right now. So talk about real life, I mean, I almost wanna just end the video right there. I mean, talk about ending and just having, uh, I, I mean, I suppose this is a live trade video, but talk about a, a great, great real-time learning uh, example here of just uh, the hazards of playing the, the hold and hope game. Because the hold and hope game here, the first time would have worked out. But in this situation, it would not have worked out. And let's just say I actually did hold and hope. So that's the other thing is, yeah, hold and hope, I made money. So let's say, okay, I'm gonna buy this pullback. And then I hold and hope again. Notice what happens, all my gains are wiped away. So all it takes is one to wipe away a whole lot of gains. So even if I had held and hoped and then done it again, you know, this you can always, you know, you always hear, well, all it takes is one bad trade, which is true. And this is what I mean by that. Imagine getting stuck in one of these. I mean, that's gonna wipe away a whole lot of uh, potentially winning trades. But anyways, I, I've blabbered on long enough about it. But like I said, that's just a classic, clutch, real life example here of just the dangers of playing that hold and hope game. High risk trade here around the 371.50 mark. So that's why I'm only doing 75 shares um, because this could very well be a bottom. But if this is some sort of um, new breakdown, then I'm very interested, although I'm not willing to take it on this candle. So for the next, uh, basically, we'll call it 30 seconds or so, I can't take this trade. But if it wants to go and then come down looking for 371.50 and then looking to play a, a bigger break to the downside. But like I said, can't take it right now. That'd be uh, too much chasing in my mind. But that's the current status and plan right now. There we go. All right, good. That candle managed to close above it. So again, let's see. Ideal area right around the 371.50 mark. But I will pause for now. All right, maybe coming into play here. Okay, in at 371.50. So did I get stuck here in a bounce or does this thing actually truly wanna break down? So 371, definitely gonna be that main breakdown point. Wow, fantastic. So still have 25 shares left. Let's see if we can get this thing down below 370 again. See it pick up some pace here. But that was such a big move. I think I'm just gonna take that. So hey, look at that, up $15 on the day. And yes, I know, Clay, why didn't you do like three or 400 shares? That would have been, uh, you know, you'd be up 600 bucks or 500 bucks right now, whatever it would have been. I know, I know, I get it. Hindsight, hindsight, but um, like I said, it was, it, that could have bounced from there. Now, of course, I like the odds of it to not bounce, hence me taking the trade. But yeah, that, that was still a, a uh, you know, a relative possibility there. And you can see actually, I'm glad I got it where I did because now it snapped right back upwards. Uh, but overall got the breakdown, moved very, very quickly. And so what, I made about 100 bucks on that trade, give or take, uh, because now I'm actually up $15. But anyways, that's kind of all, I mean, it matters, but the main lesson here was holding and hoping. Because remember, 
per the holding and hoping example, now look at where this is. Sure, that move right there, and this is where the market's cruel, right? Okay, people are, that were holding and hoping, okay, thank you, thank you, okay, it's bouncing. Uh, just kidding, Whew, back down it goes. And once again, bouncing, bouncing, bouncing. So who knows, maybe the market's getting ready to set up another cruel joke and then just roll right back over again. Uh, but this is why holding and hoping is oh so dangerous. Had I held and hoped, held I, again, I get it there, I would have made money. Fantastic, okay, good. But then what I, okay, I, I'm, let's do it again. And I bought somewhere up around there and then I held and hope all those gains would be gone, plus I'd be in even a bigger of a hole. And that is why as annoying as it is, as, as embarrassing as it can be, especially if you're gonna post it on YouTube like this, that's just part of the game. That's part of trading. You know, it, it can happen, it will happen to you, and just because it happens doesn't mean that you're doing anything wrong. It just means that there's no guarantees in the market and you know, there, no strategy is 100% perfect. So that's why you just gotta manage risk and, and, and just fight to survive, which is what today was, right? A, a survival day, so 15 bucks, I can you know, pick up a, I don't know, is uh, Little Caesars, do they even have, or is inflation affected that too? Is there even $5 hot and ready's anymore? If so, I can pick up you know, three of those, I guess. But um, overall, I'm gonna call it a day, uh, kind of choppy out there and, um, Another reason why I decided to you know reduce share size just because it w w was quite choppy. But from a educational standpoint, I mean, if you're still here right now, I, I guess don't believe me because I could just be a stranger. But ask anybody, find somebody that you do believe, and say, hey, is holding and hoping is that a good strategy? Hey, does risk management matter? And anybody, they're going to say, no, 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 you don't want to hold and hope. And absolutely, risk management matters. So like I said, I, I would like for you to believe me, but that's okay if you don't. I understand I could be a stranger, but please find somebody that you believe and ask them, hey, is holding and hoping a dangerous strategy and does risk management matter? Um, and hopefully they'll uh, they'll say, well, yes, it absolutely does. And if you don't, and if they, you know, if you don't want to believe me, that's fine, but that's literally what you just saw play out here. Um, so I'm rambling here, but I'm curious to see if this thing's going to roll back over or not. Uh, but I am going to go ahead and wrap things up. So just understand, the moral of the story here is, you know what? Holding and hoping is dangerous. And yeah, I made $15, uh, but the previous video, uh, for those of you that watched the other one on Thursday, you know, I was up over $1,100. So I'll, I'll take it. If I can make $1,100 and then follow that up with you know $15, overall, I'm very happy uh, with how that's turned out. Uh, but, and I'm stalling, stalling, here it comes back down. Is it going to really crash back to the downside? That would be cruel if it did that again. But anyways, I am gonna go ahead and wrap things up. Really quickly though, if you do enjoy these live trade videos, and especially if you enjoy when I kind of bake in these uh, you know, live lessons here, then do a couple things for me. Hit the like button, leave a basic comment, even if it's just hi, smiley face, unicorn emoji. Any sort of comment goes a long way. So if you enjoy the videos, if you want me to keep making them, because they're not easy to make, I have to talk to you, I have to think about what I'm gonna say to you, I have to think about my own trading, I have to execute my own trades, I have to make alerts in the chat room. So there's a whole lot going on, and while the videos are possible, they're, they're very difficult, but I will keep making them as long as I know that there's interest. So if you enjoy these, if you want me to keep making them, then again, just two simple things, hit the like button, leave a basic comment down below. So thank you for hanging out, and remember, holding and hoping very, very dangerous, and you just saw exactly why in this video. First off, thanks so much for watching the entire video. Real quick, before you go, I wanna invite you to a live webinar, web class, training, workshop, online event, whatever you wanna call it, but it will be me live revealing to you what I discovered that has allowed me to transform myself from being an employee to being my own boss, including how I had only one losing day out of 73 days in total. I'm going to cover three keys that have helped me unlock profitable consistency within the markets. The first key is super weird, but in a productive type of way. The second key is super awesome because it quite literally is wired into our DNA as humans, making it very easy to use. But in a cruel way, this becomes a pitfall for many traders. I'll explain it all though, including how to avoid the pitfall that it creates for some. And yeah, the third key, when you hear it, sounds way too, good, way too good to be true, but it's not, and I'll show you how it all works. Then at the end, I open it up for a question and answer session that is, again, totally live. Even if you can't make the live session, please still sign up as it will be recorded, and you can go back and watch the replay that I will send you. Click the image on the screen or click the link down in the description box so you can get the date and time and claim your spot, which I should note is limited due to the fact that this truly is a live event. If you have any questions, let me know. If not, I'll be seeing you soon.